where are the low value men? Like, what are what are all the low value men up to during these trying times? Because the high value men, they, I know they're around. They won't shut the fuck up. Low value men, I have not heard a word out of. I'm starting to think I'm on their side. I think I want one of those. I want a low value man. They don't make podcasts. I haven't seen one low value man make a podcast. Do they not know how to use microphones? Maybe that's a good thing. That's that's hot. All right. I haven't seen. I've never seen a man use a microphone for good. Until now, everybody buckle up. It's low value mail time with your host, Danny Polish Chubb. Oh, what is happening, everybody? Happy Tuesday. Welcome back to an all new episode of Low Value Mail on this Tuesday, May 16th, 2023, in the year of our Lord. I don't know which Lord yet. I say it every week. I'm leaning towards Muslim. Islam seems pretty hot recently. Islam is popping off right now, huh? Seems like a lot of people. I don't know if it's the Andrew Tate effect, uh, but Islam seems very trendy. I don't know if they take lots of Jews, but uh, not important. Anyways, we are back with an all-new episode of Low Value Mail. Thank you very much, everyone, for tuning in. Tonight, our guest is Sarah Higdon. Uh, she's going to be joining us very shortly. Sarah is a content creator on YouTube and Rumble, a writer for the post-millennial and human events, and a trans person fighting against gender ideology, um, which is kind of the reason why I wanted to have her on. I just thought that would be a, a, an interesting guest to have. She's, she's got a, a pretty pretty interesting story, and I can only imagine how difficult it is because I, I think with all the trans stuff, I mean, we'll, we'll talk to her uh, very shortly, um, but w- with a lot of that stuff, th- it seems like it's a monolith where, you know, they're, they're, they don't really allow a lot of dissenting opinions. Uh, like many, many movements, um, of the sort. So, anyways, we're gonna be joined uh, shortly with uh, Sarah. Shout out to everybody watching over on YouTube and Rumble. Uh, I sometimes forget that there's people watching on Rumble, and I apologize because everybody on Rumble is super based, and I love you all. Um, someone over, oh, CMC Advance. I think this is why I met him in uh, Saratoga. He says, "Of course, I come in," and he says, "The Jews aren't important." Internalized anti-Semitism. Well, it could only be internalized anti-Semitism, uh, can't it? So, anyhow, before we get started, a few points of housekeeping, and then we will get to the show. Uh, so please, as always, like and subscribe. Hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. If you're listening to this over on Spotify or Apple or whatever, just leave a review a rating, all that stuff helps the show. It helps us out. And you want to help us, don't you? And by us, I mean me, because I do this all by myself. Um, So please consider doing that. And then as always, we got an after show tonight at 11 p.m. The after shows have been quite fun. Uh, I, I haven't been getting a lot of copyright claims on the after shows. So I guess that is, uh, I guess that's someone. Bryce in the chat says, I wish I was on Rumble. So then go to Rumble. It's, it's, it's just on, I guess if you're not on your computer. I don't know. I don't I don't know much about this. I mean, I do, but I don't care. It's more um, important. But yes, so uh, if you want to get access to the after show and uh, many other things. From now on, by the way, the female dating strategy streams that I do, uh, that, I, that uh, many of you... For some reason, like to watch still. I don't know why, but um, the live streams will only be happening on YouTube. And after the live streams, the they will be only available to subscribers. And you, you could just be as little as you could join for a dollar on the, the YouTube channel because I'm just making the link unlisted. Or if you're clever, save the link and then distribute it. Undercut me. If you're smart, this is what you do, okay? is you save the link from the live stream because it's just an unlisted live stream and then you go and you undercut me and you sell it to people for 50 cents a month. That would be clever, except you wouldn't get all the other features and then you, but um, anyways, 
uh, that's what's happening with the female dating strategy stream. We did one on Sunday. Uh, one of the queens, Roe, I believe, was in the chat for most of the show. Actually, it was uh, she was. We don't know, she answered a lot of questions. So, anyways, you can sign up there uh, on YouTube, Patreon, locals, and Twitter now. Although Twitter, Twitter, I've like I said recently, I have a feeling Twitter in the next couple of weeks um, will be basically providing everything that Patreon provides. At which point, I'm going to be attempting to move specifically to Twitter subscribers only because I think that'll be way better. And Patreon stinks. Uh, but for now, if you want to sign up for the Patreon, support the show, go for it. Uh, we'll, we'll do that. And, uh, once I hit 500 subscribers, which I think we're like three and change, once we hit 500 subscribers, either I'm going to do a daytime show or, uh, I'm going to add time to the, this show, one of the others. And, uh, yeah. Also tomorrow night, we are back with an all new episode of the bathhouse. If you've never seen the bathhouse, South Coast Horizon says rip white squares tier. No, it's not rip white squares tier. I'm not getting rid of that. So you'll still, I'm still going to do it, but I'm just going to like, it'll just be better on, on Twitter, but I'm not going to get rid of, like there's no commute. There's not, not that there's no community on Patreon, but like there's not really, like we could have a way better time if all of us were on Twitter, assuming that like, you know, they are allowed background play and stuff like that but anyways no not ripped to the white squares the white squares are not going anywhere um but anyways tomorrow night i'm back with an all-new episode of the bathhouse live from the stand comedy club green room in here in new york city um joined by che Arena, carlos hernandez and chris from brooklyn so come uh check out that episode it should be it should be uh, a good one. It's going to be a fun time. If you've caught any of the uh, any of the bathhouse episodes, um, and we have a new rule on the bathhouse, courtesy of our friend the Goob, no doxing. Because I have noticed that a couple of the comics don't realize, and they keep just reading people's names off the the collar display, and then I have to tell them, don't do that. But then that probably makes people not really want to call in. Uh, I would imagine. So, uh, new rule. Of, for the bathhouse. So anyways, come check that out tomorrow night, 10 30 PM. Uh, join my mailing list. If you want to check me out doing stand up comedy, I think there should be a link below. Um, and yes, without further ado, let me bring on our guest. One second, please. While I figure this all out, uh, as mentioned, this is a one man show. Hold on. Hold on. Okay. Let's see. How's this? Is this something? And oh, almost there. We are almost there. Boom. Sarah, can you hear me? I can hear you. Can you hear me? Nope. There we go. All right. Welcome, Sarah Higdon to Low Value Mail. Appreciate you taking the time to come on the show. Um, we got a good episode uh, planned for tonight. So just so everybody knows, the phone lines are not open yet. They will be open in a bit. Any questions you have uh, for Sarah, you can call in and ask Sarah yourself because that is the nature of low value mail is that we kind of are basically just a call in show. So Sarah, thank you That's pretty good. for joining us I today. Like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Me. I mean, it's literally a lot of people are like, oh, that's so cool. That I'm like, this is an AM radio show. <laughs> Essentially. That's great. But uh it's it's an AM radio show in 2023 on YouTube, uh, borderline TV show production kind of not good like that. But all right, so so Sarah, I guess to start, why don't you just uh, tell people about yourself just so we can get the ball all rolling here? Everything uh, a little quick summary. Yeah, so quick summary. Um, I transitioned back in 2019. Before that, I served in the army for seven and a half years as a logistics officer. Um, I've had gender dysphoria my entire life um, and then just decided that, uh, you know, as an adult to be able to change that, saw what was happening in the country right now and decided to do something about it. So I launched my YouTube channel in uh, March of 2020 and I've kind of been, you know, speaking out, traveling the country, doing events with, um, you know, especially with Chloe Cole, me and Chloe Cole have done quite a few events together and um, yeah, just speaking out against like with the insanity that we're seeing in the community and trying to bring a different perspective than what we're actually seeing. 
And so what are the, cause, cause I was saying early on, like the intro, cause I imagine in the trans community, like they don't really accept a ton of dissent on a lot of this stuff. Yeah. It's interesting because, um, when you look at it, like the online community, you're accurate. Um, but what I've started to notice lately is it's not even trans people that are speaking for trans people. You know how they, how they always like to do that on the left. They always like to speak for people. Um, sure, so actually, course, I yeah. Wrote an, uh, yeah, I wrote an op-ed in uh, Human Events um, about a month ago, and it was kind of talking about that, you know, how queer theory and trans people have become like BLM and black people were in 2020, uh, trying to push like their neo-Marxist ideals to the rest of the country and using a group of people to do it. Like essentially, you're just, yeah, you're just a, a pawn on a... Yeah. And so what well, are the what, events that, sorry, go ahead. I, I was going to say what, what makes it even easier for this is that like with BLM, it, they had to like actually you like get black people to go along with their, with their narratives with this, all they now have to do is self ID into a, into a category and then they can just perpetuate all the harm that they want. Right. Okay. So, so the events that you're saying, what was, uh, who are you doing the events with Chloe? Chloe Cole. Chloe Cole's the detransitioner that's been kind of everywhere. Oh, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've, I've seen her uh, around Twitter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So and what are the events? Like, these are just, like, uh, talks? Yeah, I mean, we just give we give speeches, and a lot of times it's a lot of Q&A sessions with audience members. Um, and, yeah, I mean, it's just uh, – I like Q&As a lot better than just, like, giving a speech because it's interactive and people can ask questions, and it's and it's, I think people get a lot more out of it. Um, but even on top of that, I've been also been doing uh, – not necessarily with her, but I've been lobbying uh, across the country as well. Like, we just passed a bill here in Georgia that I lobbied pretty hard for. Um, I was down at the Capitol quite a bit to ban – cross-sex hormones and puberty blockers actually we didn't get puberty blockers but cross-sex hormones and surgeries for minors okay and do you have um like do people protest your your events and stuff oh yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah we time. did an event in wisconsin um that was at the ingleside hotel up there and they uh protested and did all that it wasn't a lot of people because it was january and it was freezing uh, but actually, yeah. the last event that we did in Pennsylvania, just outside of Philly, they actually, um, it wasn't even just protested, actually. So we kept the venue hidden, and then a, a radio host accidentally leaked it the day before. And as soon as they leaked it, Antifa was calling and threatening and trying to get it shut down, and they did. And then a church in North Philly ended up hosting us. So we got a venue like last minute. But yeah, they tried to shut us down. So weird, the state of affairs where it's like, yeah, you got to go do this stuff at a church. I remember Jordan Peterson said the funniest thing because I'm from Toronto and Jordan Peterson, like when he was uh, doing all his talks at the University of Toronto, he was getting protested and then he just moved all his talks to like eight in the morning or something or like seven yeah. in the morning. He goes like nobody protested them anymore. Yeah, I mean, Trantifa, you know, they're everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that, that must... And so what do they call... It? What are they, like, you're a traitor? Like, wh what is the kind of... Like, what are they trying to say? Because um, obviously... Yeah. Yeah, I've been yeah, called so many ahead, different names. Um, it's, I mean, traitor is one that we hear quite a bit. We hear... I mean, I get called a turf. I get called transphobic. I get called a self-hating trans person. A pick-me... Um, I mean, you think, <laughs> I mean, it's all the pick same me. language that they use for everybody else. Yeah, because I mean, you want to be picked by conservatives, is what they say, right? It's like, sure. hey, oh, pick sure, me. sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, it's like, be, being called a pick me is, I mean, I, I guess it would be like calling a black person an Uncle Tom or something like that, right? Right, yeah, yeah. That, that's like essentially that. That's yeah. That would be the the similar <laughs> thing. And so, what's the, the like they've just been protesting you but for the most part it, you've been able to and like are these well attended generally like uh yeah i mean we generally get about 200 people oh wow that's that's pretty impressive and, yeah. and so in your whole basically thing is you're just against uh children or whatever anyone yeah i mean it's uh 
I'm fighting a lot about against queer theory and fighting um, against the sexualization, the mutiliza mutilization um, of children. Like what we're seeing, even against like the drag queen story hours and, and or drag kids t taking kids to drag show and stuff like that. Um, I was a member of Gays Against Groomers, so. That, yeah. Did they get shut down? I know their Twitter account kept getting... Nope, they're up. They're up and running, uh, doing well too, and uh, just keeping the fight moving forward. It should be interesting next month because next month is Rainbow Month, right? So, like we're in uh, Pride or whatever. <laughs> yeah. So and interesting. How how so? I well, because it's so last year. It's usually when like the craziest stuff happens that kind of sets the tone for the next year. So last year is really when the family drag shows and stuff like the, the, the family friendly drag shows and all that stuff started coming out was last pride it was last June. And that's what, that's actually gays against groomers launched last June. And then they, is that true? They, it's I mean, only it, been in for the last year. Yeah. They launched Jesus. last June. Yeah. It I mean, it's so... been a long year, right? <laughs> I guess. Cause I remember looking up, I was like trying to do something for like a sketch and I was the drag queen, the story time. And like the, that, is a little older, I guess. The drag queen. Um, yeah, yeah. That that, the, that was starting to take place. I, I, maybe a year or two ago. Yeah, um, it's a little bit interesting, and most people don't realize. Like some people would say, like, what's the issue if drag queens aren't like out there dancing sexually and stuff for kids? But what it is is it's indoctrination into a lifestyle. It's 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 like, hey, I see this this person at the uh, at the library. Maybe we should take them to the club, and so that they can be introduced to you know the the club lifestyle because that's where it's generally at is in bars. Yeah, like I've joked about it, but like I've been to drag shows before, and I've never thought there should be kids here. Yeah, like that. They're <laughs> I mean, like, oh man, like kids are probably <laughs> bummed. That they're not here yeah, right now. Yeah, I, I don't know what, I mean, what kind of kid would want to go to a drag show? I, I mean, it's like, drag can be great. It's it's great. It can be great entertainment for adults, just not kids. <laughs> yeah, it does. It does seem like a lot of people, I guess, you know, they'll say like the slippery slope stuff. And then people will be like, there's no such thing as a slippery slope. And then, but it does seem to inch, you know, like more and more towards one direction, yeah. I guess. Yeah. So, yeah. um. So you were in the military for how long? Seven and a half years. Seven and a half years. And uh, and what did you do? So I was a logistics officer. I worked, uh, and actually the two units I was in. So my I spent my lieutenant time four years at Fort Campbell, Kentucky. I was uh, I provided frontline support to the hunter for like um, the third brigade. Actually, first the five hundred six uh, infantry unit. Um, out of the hunter and first, and then my last two years I was. Um, a brigade staff at the uh, 80, 3rd Brigade 82nd. And so I jumped out of airplanes and stuff like that when I was in. Providing support, oh, uh, logistical well, and supports. <laughs> were you there for the, like, Trump's, like, transgender ban? Yeah, so it, it was interesting because when I, so I, that was, it was around the time I was getting out. Um, it was, that was what, 2017 timeframe. I got out in October, 2017. So I wasn't in for very long while Trump was, was president. Um, and I actually didn't transition while I was in, I got out. I didn't even plan on transitioning well in the military. I got out and started transitioning in 2019. But did you plan to one day do that? Like, did you have a plan where one day you were going to transition or no? No, that that was um, so. The first person I ever came out to was in 2014, um, and I, you know, after that, um, I, it took me from tw from that time frame basically to explore who I was and what this feeling that I had kind of felt my whole life really was. Um, and when I got out in 2017, I started living part time as uh, like every weekend I was I was out living as a woman, but then you know, going and working and everything um, as a man. And then I decided in summer of 2018, after I came out to my family that I was going to transition and it took me a little bit to get an appointment with a doctor to start hormones. Yeah. And you say that you're uh, like in your bio says Catholic, like, was that? Yeah. 
Uh, I know some some people in the, the in uh, the chat and stuff, and like some some subscribers were wondering how do you balance like. Yeah, I mean, I I've always I was raised Catholic. Um, I was, you know, and I think that I mean, the way I, I look at it is, uh, you know, Jesus loved everybody. He died for our sins. And so when you actually look at some of the other stuff in the Bible where you see, you know, Christians are allowed to eat pork, whereas in other religions you're not because, and it, and it has to do with the fact that Jesus died for this, died for our sins. So you're allowed, to, like some of these things have been kind of erased with Jesus. And so it, it kind of squares it up that it's like, okay, the Old Testament doesn't necessarily, those rules don't necessarily apply after Jesus's death. Right. So, and I mean, I guess there's honestly so many like shades of religion yeah. or whatever and stuff like that um so i guess what are your with the whole trump like transgender man what are your thoughts on that you know i had no issue with it when he uh when he initiated it um it actually was still less restrictive than it was under don't ask don't tell um because you could be openly trans or open or and you know live your life as a woman outside of work you just couldn't be openly trans at work um, as well as somebody who was in a leadership role my entire uh, career, I realized that, um, you know, if somebody has the surgery, they would be basically not be able to do their job for a year, but they would still be filling the role of somebody that could be doing their job. And so it really put a big strain on, on the leadership to be able to um, at, at the end of the day. So I was like, you know, if you, if you want to transition, you can generate, you know, I think you, you should get out and do it. Um, even though I do support, I mean, I have friends and stuff like that, that are in the military that have, uh, transitioned and they're doing well. Um, but they take a lot of time if they've had, you know, if they have to have surgery or, you know, you're on hormones or anything like that. So, um, it's, it's whatever works for the military. I don't think it should be something that should be like pushed and promoted though like they're doing like with the navy right what do you mean oh yeah i saw what was the thing with the <laughs> navy like a couple weeks ago there's like a drag well they uh, were like celebrating that some of the some of the navy guys um that are now recruiters are drag queens so they're trying to like appeal to a certain demographic that's never going to join the military and it makes absolutely no sense and it does it makes the enemies kind of laugh at us yeah, and aren't like recruitment numbers way low right now? For oh, yeah. I, I keep seeing like every branch of the military is like. Are you are do you think they're doing that because they're just like we need to take we need to cast the net wider or? I you know I don't I think so I think they're trying to reach a, a bigger demographic, um, but they just don't know how to do it. They don't actually have good marketing people in the military to be able to do that, um, and it's hard because you have somebody like General Milley who is now infatuated with like wokeness where he made like comments about how he was fascinated about white rage and was like implementing crt stuff in the military and most people don't want to join the military when all that stuff's happening you know it's kind of like bud light going to dylan mulvaney they yeah. don't know what they're getting into <laughs> which actually yeah. reminds me so i do yeah. have some miller light because i um uh, i heard that real women drink miller light um and so I'm yeah just trying there you to, go trying to fit in <laughs> Nice, nice. I mean, it tastes yeah, like it tastes like piss water, but you gotta you gotta do what you gotta do. <laughs> they are literally both two of the most horrible beers. I always joke, I'm like, those are all these light beers are straight up. Like, I was in uh, I was in upstate New York, like right after the Dylan Mulvaney thing, and I was in oh, like yeah. a real like dive bar, like on the outskirts of like some small town, and just like all these dudes who are like literally like, in the middle of their shifts, like you know, working, and they pop into some bar, and like half of them drink Bud Light. And the other half are like making fun of them. But for the most part, they're all alcoholics <laughs> who are just like have to drink light yeah. beer. Yeah, no, you're right. I was up in Michigan. It was the same thing. And everybody's like going away from Bud Light. Like they switched for Bud Light. It was like everywhere. And I think there was a there was something where you could actually see that like all the other light beers were all gone and Bud Light was full. Yeah. <laughs> Bud Light. Yeah, apparently they're like giving them away. They're literally like they give you a twenty dollar voucher to buy them. Um, okay, so we're gonna open the phone lines in probably like ten minutes. Um, so I have a, a question because you are one of the. You obviously you talk about that you have dysphoria, yeah. and that 
you basically say like it's a whatever like a mental condition right yeah. which is very rare i find like i think a lot of people's like you know whole kind of confusion around this stuff is that that's what it obviously seems is going on but then you're like if you say it you get fired well you don't just get fired and it you was get the suspended from twitter <laughs> Or whatever, you get suspended from Twitter, like you could have your whole life like ruined or whatever. And then yeah. um but like that's what they were saying it was not that long ago, like when it was in like the DSM five or whatever. And then yeah. it's been this like shift recently. So like how not how do you deal with that, but I guess you must get a lot of backlash for that as well. Yeah. Well, that's the thing is we try to make sure that I, I when you talk to that's the difference between you know transsexuals and transgender like transgender is this umbrella term that they kind of shifted to in like 2013 and when they shifted to it being transgender then it it really became more the you know the postmodern aspect of it to where you could just kind of self id into it transsexual you have to have gender dysphoria um and you actually have to take the steps to transition in order to be considered trans and so that's why we're trying to reclaim that word um and that's why when you see people using the term transsexual they're usually pretty based because they don't they're they they do not agree with all the other nonsense that's being you know done in our name but um you just have to yeah you have to try to educate because most people don't want to admit i mean i i actually illness. i was gonna say i'm like i didn't even know there was a distinction between transsexual and transgender yeah like, i assume that they're like they just they change the term what they call it now well that's what they i mean it's just like everything else once they change the term then they change the rules of the term um and so now it it, be, it becomes so vague and so yeah there is a it's a big difference and actually they do call i mean anybody that uses they they will tell us that we use using the term transsexual is like us calling us ourselves a slur and it's like no, no no that's that's who we are that's what we've always been you know um and it does it means that we believe that you have to have gender dysphoria to be trans you have to actually take hormones you have to take the steps to actually transition and not just say that you're trans like not have like a beard and just sit out there and say hey i'm trans and i can you know do what i want <laughs> yeah I, I live in brooklyn where like you, you see that a lot where it's just like a you know a dude who looks like me and just a dress kind of like essentially but you can tell like they're not like take they're not on hormones or anything they're just yeah like they're probably would be like so do you what, what are your thoughts on like non-binary you're like you're not i think it's i think it's a made-up uh term um i think it's people that want to feel special usually i know a couple of people that i like that are that consider themselves non-binary but the thing is is they say like oh you could to be non-binary you just have to not feel like you're your sex but that's kind of given into like the stereotypes of if you're an effeminate man then you're non-binary or if you're um a tomboy you're non-binary or you're trans and that used to be what we tried to get away from is like labeling people like it was like okay it was cool to, it was okay to be a tomboy it didn't make you you know a boy it didn't make you trans it didn't even make you gay you know it just means that you like different things than the stereotypical person that's of your sex yeah i then there are a lot of tr like people who you know women who are i guess whatever straight now and they're like yeah i was a tomboy when i was a kid like glad yeah. i didn't get transition but then also the biggest tomboy i knew when i was a kid is now a trans man so there's that too <laughs> i mean, <laughs> I guess I mean but know. that's the thing is it, it happens i mean when you think about it it happens because um it's going to i mean like 0 0.05 percent have gender dysphoria and actually that's what it used to be before this huge you know spike and craze but basically what they're telling is anybody any child that feels uncomfortable in their body as they're going through puberty that's the key it's like as they're going through puberty you're telling kids that are uncomfortable in their body like every person doesn't feel uncomfortable as they're going through puberty you're telling them that they're probably trans and they can stop this process of of actually you know going through puberty like that yeah and so you're you're a big advocate of obviously like not uh no like none of the puberty blockers oh no all, all that oh, stuff no. so because a lot of people harmful. say that i mean the one 
It is, it, and it seems like objectively, just with common sense, because so many people would be like, "Oh, it can completely undo it," and like, you know, you can completely like reverse it, and there's, you know, I mean, if you consider a micro penis, you know, being able to reverse it, I, I think then you know, because it, that's the thing is, if you block somebody's puberty, they never develop stuff like that. They don't develop height. They don't develop bone density. They don't develop. Um, and actually, it was Marcy Bowers, who's the president of the World Professional Association of Transgender Health. She actually said on a video that 100% of the time, like as if she's done bottom surgery on somebody um, and they've never, you know, they were actually blocked before puberty, then they're never able to achieve orgasm as an adult, which means that they're you're, you're asking children to consent to something that they don't even know what it means yet and nor should they. Yeah, I mean, it seems it seems so obvious that but there's this huge divide, I guess. Like, do you have any kind of insight into why? Like, is it just like the type of people who would generally find themselves to be like, you know, more like liberal and empathetic and, and they're just coming at it from that angle where they're just like literally clouding all of their like common sense? I think there's a lot of that. I think, it, I mean, there's so many different factors that could come into play. Um, and that is absolutely one of them. I think that that's probably the biggest, like the most part is that like they, and, and you see it, the people that are actually kind of pushing the narrative utilize like, oh, this is life-saving. If you take this away, it's life-saving. Basically utilize like doing what abusers do and saying that, if you don't do this, this person's going to kill themselves. And so when you tell people that, then that that scares them. It, it appeals to them emotionally. And so, of course, they're going to want to do, especially when you're talking to parents. Parents want what's best for their kids no matter what. And so when you tell them that this could happen to their child, you know, they're going to want to do what's best for their child. Now, you also have the factions that we call them the trans housing mommies that they are you know this it is just so happens to typically be the upper white middle class progressive woman who transitions their child so that they can get woke points because they've been told so long that they are an oppressor you know and so they can get it, yeah escape that oppressor status by having a trans child and treating that child like it's the it's it's the savior i I think actually that's how I found you was you responded to a tweet with exactly what you just said. And I remember seeing that. I go, oh, that's actually exactly what that is. Like, and I it never seen the it Kim actually Klasik put tweet. that way. Yeah, Kim Klasik Possibly. was one that blew up. It had like 5 million views that um, she asked why you don't see the same transition yes. rates in the hood. And I, and that's what I said. Yeah. It's like, we've, yeah. been to, we've been telling, you know, these, these people that they're oppressors and so that they can have, a, they can have children that, that can, um, and they can use their children to get out of their oppressed status. And like, do you know, like, what are the rates of, of all this stuff in like, you know, other countries now don't obviously don't factor in countries where like it's illegal and stuff like, but, you know, like, is it, does it represent, like, is it similar in other countries? Is it way different than the U.S. and well, Canada? And um, well, we're behind, actually. I think we're we're actually behind because um, it did. In about 2014, 2015 time frame, you saw the charts spike tremendously among young people in just about every country in the world. Um, it's one of the reasons why like the Tavistock clinic in England has shut down because they have started doing studies to realize that maybe they're not, you know, um, the way that they've been treating it is not actually beneficial. Like they've been saying. So we're kind of behind the curve when it comes to all of this, we are also kind of behind the curve to get into it. But what's really interesting is historically it's always been males that have been, uh, that have transitioned. It's been mostly males and very few females. Um, when that spike hit, it's mostly young females that are transitioning um, that are saying that they're boys and, and not as many young males that are doing it. It's, I mean, this, the, there's a little spike, but it's not even nearly the the percentages. It's, it's like the males are here and the females just shoot up way, way up at the top of the chart. And, um, and then there's, there's a lot of factors for that too, because you see um, autism, especially in young girls is underdiagnosed and you see the traits of autism 
uh, very highly into pulling them into like a trans ideology. And so it's manipulating yeah. and it's almost eugen it's I mean, there's a lot of eugenics at play too. There I mean you're sterilizing um a, a high population of autistic girls. Yeah, there's I I've said it before on uh, like my other podcast too with but uh like I know three female comedians from Canada and like, you know, it's not that many comics in Canada period like and I know three who have all had mastectomies in the last like 24 months probably which That's, I'm just like yeah, what are the odds of that and so do you just well, chalk are, that up to they, just do, do social all, contagion well, do, do they, well, do they, yeah I was gonna say do they all hang out together because it could very well be yes a yeah they all, they're all there. yeah so when one person uh, absolutely does it, it kind of and, yeah yeah the social contagion aspect that's is such 100% a real yeah, like that seems like such a. I, I mean, obviously, like I'm sure people do all sorts of crazy stuff for social contagion reasons, but like that is such a big jump. But I, I can't tell if there's like a status element in that because they're definitely, you know, queer. They're not just like straight women who are like, I'm just getting yeah. a mastectomy. Like they're in that world already. So I, I don't know if it's like they're just climbing the hierarchy of that world because that's how yeah. it works now. Yeah, I could see that being the case. That's generally the case um, in the queer world. And actually, I mean, there was a TikTok not too long ago that kind of they exposed it. I mean, they they said exactly what we've all been saying is queer is an ideology. It's not a sexuality. And so and, and it's based off of queer theory, which I always talk about because, you know, the Q is based in postmodernism and if you know postmodernism it means that there's no, they don't believe that there's such thing as absolute truth which means that they don't believe in sexuality so basically they're erasing the original lgb and t didn't the q used to be questioning i've heard i always thought there was that. A, i always thought there was a there was a, a confusion about that i always thought it was for q but then i did hear that it was, i've heard questioning before but yeah, the the queer aspect of it is uh, kind of taking over. Anything after the T is all based in queer theory. Huh. Okay, I'm gonna open the phone lines if anybody wants to call in if I have any questions for you, and then uh, we we can continue this. One triple eight nine four nine two nine six nine extension one, or you can press extension two. It doesn't matter. I arbitrarily made them for my other show um all right so uh while we wait for calls and as i mentioned it, it, when people call uh when people call like um there'll be a minor moment when i gotta connect you but so i got a question from uh some one of a uh, subscriber um his name is jr and he has a question for you that he wrote in he says how do you rational rationalize that gender dysphoria, or not necessarily you rationalize, but how are people rationalizing that gender dysphoria should be treated differently from body dysmorphia? Um, body essentially, dys yeah. because yeah, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh no, so I was going to well, say, just because uh, he says, I think there's a delay. So, um, yeah, body yeah, sorry, dysmorphia sorry. Go, go ahead. and gender dysphoria are opposite concepts. That's the best way to say it. So. Body dysmorphia means that so the easiest way to describe it is when you look in a mirror and you have body dysmorphia. So say you're like super skinny and you look in the mirror, you think you actually are fat. Like you see something that's not there. Gender dysphoria is the exact opposite concept to where when I look in the mirror or somebody with gender dysphoria looks in the mirror, I see like my secondary sex characteristics and they don't match what I want them to. And that makes me uncomfortable, but I'm not seeing something that's not there. Where those two start to overlap is like somebody who is completely passable. They will continue to have surgery after surgery after surgery because they don't see the passability because everything that they see in the mirror makes them look, say, male, if they're a male. Um, and so they'll continue these surgeries even though they probably don't need them to you know, pass into society. So there is some overlap, but typically they're about they're opposite concepts. Oh, okay, in that sense, because yeah, I always did wonder, like even before he asked this, like you know, because uh, yeah, like someone who's obviously anorexic, you wouldn't encourage them if they, um, you know, needed to m modify their body or whatever. But I guess that's a that is a a good explanation. Um, 
I do have a, do you get, I guess you probably, this is a stupid question because I think they we're so bombarded with all this stuff. I'm like, do you just get tired of talking about all this? Yeah, I do. <laughs> yeah. It is funny. So I was actually, on, <laughs> honestly, uh, I'm like, I feel like everybody's really tired about it. And I'm like, I, I think, I mean, yeah. I think that uh, sorry, you know what? Hold, hold that. I, 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 yeah, yeah. I got, we got a call. I, I'm going to pick it up. Um, hello. Hello, Danny. Hello. Hey, what's up? One Hello, second Mary. while I patch you through. Hey, what's up? You're on with Sarah. Who are we speaking with? This is Taylor from Texas. Hello. Taylor Hello, from Texas, Danny? you are on with Sarah. Go ahead. Yeah, Sarah, yep. I had a question. So, well, I have technically two questions. Um, the first question is, do you take anything as far as like a hormone? Earlier you said that you don't like it for minors but do you yourself take anything yeah Is it on? okay um and then and that, that, i don't care the specifics but the, i guess the second question is if there was something i've asked this to different people online and gotten some crazy answers so i'm just curious what yours would be if instead of taking what you're taking to help because i'm assuming what you're taking is to help you feel more like the gender that you wish you were um, if instead there was something that would make you not feel that way, that, that basically instead of making you feel to the dysphoria to, to get rid of the dysphoria instead, would that be something you would prefer or that you would not want? Yeah. You know, I, uh, well, yeah, so I am on, I, I'll just say, I mean, I'm on estrogen and progesterone, um, and, if there was a cure, I would say, yes, I would prefer to cure this. I wouldn't prefer to live, uh, to feel more comfortable as the opposite sex. But at the end of the day, I don't look at things like that. I just think I, I was dealt these cards. I'm going to deal with them as best as possible. Um, and in some aspects, I think that, you know, being trans has, has, has been good for me. Um, and it's actually what led me to speak out to fight against this ideology. And who knows if we would still have the harmful ideology that's out there right now. And so you need people like me out here speaking out. So again, when I look at like my faith and stuff like that, I see maybe that's why I'm, I was made this way is to actually fight against, you know, the evil forces that we're seeing. Right. And, and, and that's fine. The, the crazy answer I'm getting is people saying like, no, that would be a trans genocide. And uh, you know, that's, uh, that, that's a, a front of my identity and things like, you know, crazy people who, as far as the, I, the thinking of this as a theology rather than, you know, people who I, I, I don't feel would be diagnosed with gender dysmorphia. They just are following the theology or ideology that is all this, like you said, the, the, the I just call it all neo-Marxism, but uh, of queer theory, all that crap. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, you're absolutely right. There is a lot of that faction that I mean, when they they they, they will call anything a trans genocide and the real trans genocide is is happening with, the, uh, you know, the the sterilization of these kids. That's the genocide that's happening. All right. Well, that was my question. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Thanks, caller. Yeah, I mean, I will say that if, if, you know, if you were still presenting as a man, you wouldn't be able to, you would just be me talking about this shit and nobody wants to hear me talking about this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're right. I mean, uh, right? That's like, what I, there's there's some things that, so this is like the opposite of what happens sometimes is that um, some people think that, you know, that are usually very open and, and that wanted me on and everything like that. They always say that, you know, trans voices are the most important because we've been through this. And so that's where the ones that are most important to stop the ideology. Um, but then there's some people that think that you can't fight against an ideology when you're actively living in it by actively presenting as tra being trans, then you're actively living in ideology. So they're, they're even on our side, there's two different theories on that. Right, 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 right. Okay, we got another call here. Um, one okay. second, please. Hello? Hey, Danny. It's the Goob. Hey, what's up? What's up, Goob? One second while we patch you through. All right, Goob, you are on with Sarah. Ask your question. Hey, Sarah. Uh, hey. Yeah, so as a somewhat follow-up from the last caller's question, um, 
Did you ever measure your testosterone levels before transitioning? Yeah, actually, um, the, uh, the testosterone, like that's the first appointment with the doctor is to, you know, measure your, is to take your baseline hormones as to where you, you start at. And were they low or normal? They or? were, I mean, they were, they were at the bottom of the, of the male range, uh, but they weren't low. So what, like the bottom of the normal range? what you're saying yeah 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 Yeah, they were they were still normal but they were lower and you never considered trying testosterone to see if that made you feel better rather than estrogen no um because i i mean it was interesting because um well a lot of the research that i had looked up i because i had considered to see if that was something that would um would, would change that but all the research said that no, it wasn't because again, um, that would be a it wouldn't be a mental health issue. It would actually be more of a um, a physical health issue, and I mean it is a mental health issue. I think there's just some wiring that's different in the brain, and so it kind of makes you feel a little bit different. Um, it, it's kind of like there's a study that, and Deborah So actually mentioned this in her book um, End of Gender. And it talks about, especially when the the gay community is, there is a protein that changes the brain um, and typically is lined, is linked better. That happens in the womb. So there's something that happens in the womb that could change the the trajectory. Now, trans could be, I mean, some people would say that you'd be more effeminate gay man a lot of times. Uh, so there's a lot of link in the connection there. But um so I had. Is I had there any anecdotal of knowing people who did that? What's that? Yeah, I, I, they studied. It. They were, well, do you know any like? Yeah, yeah I well. don't know anybody that did it, but I do know that they studied it, and I know that usually when people come out uh, and when they look at testosterone baselines, is um, you know the average is middle is just you, you know they're usually right in the middle of where you know normal levels would be for testosterone. Yeah. So, um, all right. I don't know. Anything I, else good? Hormones affect your mental health a bit is all I'll say to that. But, um, yeah, I do have another question is, uh, like, what do you think about people who hate you because you are transgender? Like what's your opinion towards that type of people? I mean, I, I think that there's always going to be people like that. Um, I can't let what they're, I I don't let people affect me, you know, I, I, especially like you, it's the same type of thing. You give words agency over your feelings and emotions. And so uh, when there's people like that, I, I block them and meet them out and don't worry. Don't think, don't think twice about them. Okay. Uh, Open Bob's please. Uh (laughs) All right. Thanks Goob. Oh, oh no. Uh oh, I fucked up. I done fucked up. Whoops. Hold on a second. We're gonna get her back. Sorry, Sarah. Don't go nowhere. Um whoops. Sorry everybody, I just fucking pressed the wrong button. Uh sorry. Hold tight. I screwed up. There's two of me now, but there will be I don't know what I was thinking there. We're gonna get her back though. Uh, um, I'm fucking stupid. It was only a matter of time. Oh, no. Hold on. Let's see if we can... see if we can get her back here. Sorry, everybody. I don't know what I was thinking there. Uh... Uh, sorry. Just talk amongst yourselves, everybody. I don't know what happened there. I went to go remove Goob from the call. I don't know if we lost Sarah or what. Um, hold on. Uh, just, just talk amongst yourself. Just, uh, all right. Talk amongst yourselves, everybody. Apologies. Apologies. We shall return momentarily. I don't know. I really don't know what happened there, but... Shit do happen.
Uh, so I'm just going to wait for Sarah uh, to come back in, and then we will fire this bad boy back up. It must be weird to see two of me right now. I can concede that must be odd. Um, it's weird because she's in the chat. And then, yeah, I don't know what's going on here. I don't know. Hold on. I'm going to end this and start this again. Sorry, people. This is this is Bush, Bush League. Um, but... It's called low value mail for a reason, okay? Let's not forget. It is called low value mail for a reason. It says, oh, so, oh, sorry. Uh, and I think we're back. Sorry, everybody. Hey, hey. welcome back. I, I don't know what happened. You said you there. booted me. <laughs> I was like, uh, wait, what did I say? Yeah, I don't know. I meant to. No, no, no. I meant to go boot. Uh, to go through to boot the um the guest so we could take another call. Unfortunately, I don't have a producer. Uh, so then, but also there's a reason why the show is called Low Value Mail because I am uh. Fairly low value. All right. Well, we are back. Sorry about that. Uh, I, I thought for a second. I don't know what was going on there. Uh, but we are back. Okay. And we got another caller. Uh, thanks again to our previous caller, Goob. All right. One moment, please. Hello. Danny. Hey, it's Jim Hello. Washington. How are you, buddy? Hey, Jim. One second. And Jim, you are on with Sarah. Sarah, hi. How are you? I'm Jimbo. Good, I'm doing well. Thanks for uh, the episode tonight. Good stuff. I uh, find your perspective very interesting. I, uh, the reason I called it, I have two cousins that have uh, gone through transition, uh, male to female and a female to male. And the male cousin has detransitioned. Uh, for whatever reason and then my female cousin she was one that you mentioned kind of the social contagion earlier she 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 went to a private kind of a private art school artsy fartsy school and she came out with like 11 other girls all at once and kind of chugging along doing that stuff and i'm the i have a i have a daughter who's almost four and it's kind of an interesting world kind of raising kids right now and i'm just curious you know like how how should I talk to my kid about this stuff? I mean, it's just really interesting. And I mean, like my uncles and things are not really interested in talking about how they've dealt with it. And I'm just curious, like what your advice is for a young parent in this world, kind of balancing these yeah. things out. Um, well, obviously um, you got, you got to explain what's going on uh, in a way that they understand. I think that's one thing, but also, you know, keep them off social media um, you know, if you can, if you can homeschool or get them into a school that, you know, is not like pushing this stuff, those are like the two biggest things. And then, um, as they grow up, watch, you know, their friend groups, because that's really what's happening. And you have to, um, you have to show them, I mean, if you have, if you have somebody that's in your family, that's detransition, that actually, um, will help you say see they thought that this was right for them and it's not and so um and they and they and i don't know how far down the road of transition they went but it's like that you could show that it can you know it's permanent harm that you do to yourself if, if it's not the right choice for you that's great advice i appreciate it yeah he went pretty far down he's back to being a man with basically double d tits right now i mean it's not easy for him <laughs> you know it's tough uh, yeah. How old was he, Jim? Uh, uh, Jim, how old was, was he when he transitioned? Probably in his late, probably in his like mid twenties. Yeah, twenties. Okay. I mean, yeah, I mean it's interesting because like when you hear some of the, the stories, like Chloe Cole again, she uh, her story was she, it was before kind of the craze happened, and she got you know radicalized on Instagram. So, um, Instagram 
I mean, Instagram's not so bad, but I mean, Reddit is like the worst where that you go into a Reddit, Reddit chat answer. and it's just like <laughs> cesspool. Like uh, they'll tell you every it's we call it hug boxing because all they do is tell you the good things and, you know, support you 100 percent and they never push back. Well, I'm sure. And then they hate you when you want to back out of it. It's really cult like activity. Yeah. And that's that's yep. the tough part about it, but I, I really appreciate your perspective. My my family actually just got home, so I just wanted to call and say hi. Great show, guys! And Thank you. Good work. Cool. Thank Thanks, Jim. Appreciate it, Jimbo. Wait a minute. Um. Yeah, I was wondering, like, what, like, I guess, yeah, social media probably must play a huge, like, pre and post social media. If you track this kind of stuff, it must be almost like yeah. exponentially. Well, it's interesting, too, because I actually I've said before, too, you know, I mean, I grew up through the 90s, so we were well before all this stuff. And so it was like when I had what I knew I was growing up with, you know, not knowing what was going on, you know, I, I knew something was different about me at the age of four um, that it, it wasn't a social contagion aspect. And now you just fear for the kids now and even I like I said I came out in 2014 really before all this kind of kicked off and I'm glad I did because I'm like if I actually had gender dysphoria nowadays it would be hard for me to even admit that because of the craze because of what's happening to the name right now I mean it's like the people with actual gender dysphoria why would you come out if people are automatically going to assume that you're doing it for a social contagion because it's a fad right which is like I feel like what they probably said about so much like about gay people, like, you know, 30 years ago, they'd be like, oh, this is just yeah. a fad. And then now we're like, okay, it wasn't a fad. And obviously there is such a thing as being transgender, but it's just like the degree to which I guess people are now. And like, again, if you want to be like the non-binary, like me and, you know, a lot of my friends, we always kind of laugh about it because, you know, catch up most like you catch up with a lot of these non-binary people in 20 years. You're just gonna be like, yeah, that was that was a phase. Yeah, it was just a phase. I mean, it is. I mean, you know, it's going to be. Um, yeah. And that's the whole thing is it's I, I think that, you know, non-binary people call yourself non-binary all you want. That's fine. Um, sure. Yeah. Just don't just don't just don't try to force me to, um, you know, use they them pronouns and everything like that. You know, don't try to compel speech. And I, even of course, of course. even for where people refer to me, I would say that, I, I, you know, I'm not in favor of like compelled speech. You know, I do. I mean, people are like, if people ask me, my I pronouns, actually, yeah, it's like, okay. yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. I actually I, I'm not sure about this, but I was at a Trader Joe's yesterday and I, have, I was buying like treats for my dog and I swear because Trader Joe's is like super like they're they're out there like they are, you know, very like far left organization, I guess. And the cashier was asked, like basically uses they them pronouns for my dog, like to, as to not misgender my I swear, like like they said, like what like I guess they probably just say that with everything now they do like what's their yeah. pro- like or like what are what breed are they or whatever. I can't remember yeah. exactly how it was phrased, but I was like, are you like being like, you know, you're you're tiptoeing around the gender of my dog as to not <laughs> or is this just like how you operate your whole life? But I remember like I was like it it really stuck out with me. Um all right, we got we got another caller here. One second, please. Hello. Yeah. Yo, hey, one JJ second Lieberman. while we patch you through. JJ Lieberman. Uh, JJ, you are on with Sarah. JJ is a good friend of mine. We used to have a podcast together. He's a comedian. Uh, also from Toronto. Lives in New York City now. JJ, how was Austin? JJ was just in Austin. Actually, I don't want to talk uh, about comedy know. with you. What's up, uh, JJ? How's it going? Does, can, do I have to be appropriate to Sarah? Or can we like um, um, uh, let the, empty the clip? I mean, you, you're good to go. <laughs> JJ is a JJ is an edge lord comedian who's okay. 45 Sarah, years old. I'm an edge lord um, comedian. Yeah, yeah. I was, I was edge lord before. JJ JJ's also LGBT. J, JJ is like he's okay. he's a I wouldn't say unicorn, but he's like whatever the opposite of a unicorn is. Like JJ, I knew I've known JJ for a long time, and then we, we started doing comedy together. But he came out like in his 30s. But he's okay. like a jock, kind of. He's very confused. I'm he a, might well, actually be caught say, up in this fad stuff very, we're talking about. Unicorns are, is, is, is a very specific term right there, you know. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Maybe so not unicorns. Or, maybe like a comedy unicorn. 
<laughs> I'm a comedy unicorn. I'll tell you my price, uh, Sarah, not with you. Is that so? I'm I'm working on this bit right now, but it's real. Where I'm JJ, like, oh, sorry, I just one second, JJ. Are you going to complain that you are that you can't get on LGBT shows right now? Because if you called in to talk about this oh. shit, I'm going to hang up on you. Sarah, this is very important. Is this about your comedy? Your <laughs> no, it's not about my comedy. It's about it's about the community. I want to hear your honest opinion. I'm saying on stage that when I came out, I came out in 2015. People were like finally starting to like gay people. Like, obviously, we all tolerate lesbians, right? No one really likes them, but you know, obviously, you have to like fake like them. <laughs> but now with all these different, but with all these different other letters, it's like now people are hating us again. I'm like, this fucking sucks. Like, finally, we were liked. I waited till my 30s to come out because of all the backlash, and now you get all this other bullshit. Isn't that? I, I, I said everyone should have... JJ, nobody ever liked you. Well, that's true. Me personally, no. But gay, yeah. But you, JJ was like... What do you, what's your... No, but what's your what's your opinion on, on packing in gender and sexuality together in one little fucking... And then all these other things. Like, I know the natives have floating spirits, whatever that thing is. Yeah. Two you know, spirits. Well, I... I yeah, the two spirit stuff. No, I understand. I understand where you're coming from because you're right. I think that um, like I was, I was saying, separating it earlier with the the queer theory and the Q is kind of is kind of perpetuating the harm. Um, I I understand the thought and actually um, with gays against groomers, they had started saying LGB and then putting an and symbol and T because it would separate the sexuality with you know the transsexuals that were in in the group. But the thing is, is I understood why they were conflated in the first place and the way that I always talked about it. The reason why they were connected in the first place is because like, say I'm depend on who you ask, like if I'm in a relationship with a man, is that a home? It's technically a homosexual relationship. Okay. Okay. But and just so you know, I want to make, it looks I want to make a public statement. I have, I have no problem with you, your evil kind. So you're okay with me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I fit in the LGB. I, I, I fit in the original LGB as well because I am bisexual. So it's like, you know, I, I go both ways. <laughs> okay. So, I mean, so do I. I mean, I'm not. I just, don't like even J- just like JJ. Just like JJ. I just, yeah, I just, I just like to fuck. But that's all right. We're, JJ hey, just, I, just we likes holes. That's that JJ everyone, says. He goes, I just like holes. I like holes, but I think we should all agree. Like, I'm the only one who will admit this in the under the rainbow flag, under the umbrella of the flag, that we're all mentally ill. So, but I'm proud of that, but no one else is. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so so that's why I got sus- I got locked out of my Twitter account back in December for saying gender dysphoria is a mental illness, but we shouldn't stigmatize mental illnesses. And so I, I I mean I have no issues with saying I'm mentally ill. I mean I served in the army and have other illnesses too. So it's really not an issue unless you make you it, guys unless locked you out of your account. Yeah. It's only become real. Oh, yeah. That's what I said. Yeah. Yeah, I got locked Until out of my account for twelve came. hours. Yeah, well, it it was actually it was in December. It was after Elon, and uh, the Post Millennial oh. they had written up the story on it, and Andy No tweeted it, and then Seth Dillon actually uh, quote tweeted it. So it, it it made some it made a splash, and I was on Newsmax for, for that. You know what you should have said? Oh, I think appeal? I saw that interview. You're yeah, like, yeah. You you should have said in your appeal, I got I got locked out of Twitter for saying d- gender dysfor dysmor- What is it called? It's dysphoria, gender dysphoria. Dysphoria. Okay. So I got locked out of my Twitter account for just saying gender dysphoria is a mental disease. But the previous post, I, I split screen a picture of my kid and my cock. <laughs> 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 I'm fucking genius. All right. That's JJ. <laughs> JJ. JJ, by the way, before I let you go. Oh, JJ left. I was, um, I want to, so I have like um, an 800 number for the show. And then, Mm -hmm. uh, so people can call in and there's like extensions and I wanted to make one of the extensions, a direct, uh, line to JJ, just like, I'm just going to make it his phone number so people can just press three to talk to JJ. I was going to ask him that. I wanted to ask him that on the air, if he'd be pissed or not, he probably would be really upset about it, but because there's nothing you were going to, I thought you were going to say you were going to make a one nine hundred number. Is that the late night show? 
No. Well, I was talking about it recently because I got this 1-800 number. 1-900 numbers have kind of been banned for like since the 90s. I mean, if you're wondering why you haven't seen any in a very long time, it's like Congress or the Senate passed some sort of uh, some sort of law against them. There, there's something uh, where that that's kind of uh, where they went to. But anyways, um, all right. Phone lines are open, the, everybody. Uh, are going... Thank you again, Sarah, for joining us. Oh, yeah. All these kids are going... What the hell is a one nine hundred number? <laughs> <laughs> Look it up. Look it up. There's a lot. So, how many states right now? You're obviously working with uh, to essentially is the goal to just get every state to ban medically transitioning under eighteen. I mean, that is would 18? be amazing. Yeah, so that would be amazing. But it is eighteen. Uh, but you're. I mean, you have two different types of states. You have, you know, red states. A lot of red states passing you know, bans, and then you have blue states passing like these sanctuary state bills. Like the opposite, essentially. Yeah, like you can go to like California, you can go to Oregon, you can go to, I think, Minnesota, and without your parents even being there, you can go and transition and they will like make you like wards of the state and they'll transition you there. Like if you run away. That's, and so... That's yeah. And you have to like emancipate yourself in order to do that. Or is that you just go on like a trip? No, you just leave. Yeah. You can just just, like go go. and, and they will, they will keep you there. Uh, what you're seeing a lot mostly is like one parent supportive or one parent, you know, doesn't want to. And then in messy divorces, they'll run to California and then. Right. I, I think there was a case in Vancouver in Canada of, a father who was like basically didn't approve of it and then like the mom did and then i think he's like he maybe went to jail or something like he because he would not go along with it and he was making it very yeah on his child well canada's even worse canada's really bad right now because it is if you don't affirm your child's gender it, it would be considered child abuse for you to do that or they're passing like conversion therapy bans to where they're basically therapists can't even question like do their job and actually question to see if this is what's really going on. They have to automatically affirm. Yeah. Yeah. I I lived in Toronto, like when Jordan Peterson basically came on the scene or whatever. And it's literally exactly what he said would happen essentially has happened. I can't remember what the name of it is, but there was some clinic in Toronto that was like a very famous, like gender clinic or whatever. And then the doctor essentially for like not going along with everything they kind of just like ran him out of town and like he had to yeah yeah now are are there any states like with these bills like are any of them where you go like that's actually too far or is it just because it's like you know what i mean um i think what happened in missouri um and it wasn't even a bill it was the missouri attorney general um he made it like three years like a you had to wait like three years as an adult to even transition. And I think that's, that's quite far. I mean, um, I mean, personally, I think if you're, you're an adult, you can do whatever the hell you want with your body. It's your response. You know, it's, it's, it's up to you to decide yeah. what's best for you. So I think any, any of these States that when they look at doing, you know, going, um, putting restrictions against adults, I think that's going a little bit too far, but it, it's only been, and I so it's Missouri three that, years. Definitely. It's something like three years for you like to even be able and wh- to start hormones. Wild, wild. Um, okay, we got another call here. One okay. second, please. Hello, Danny. It's Jeff. Hello, Jeff. Hello? Jeff what's up, buddy? One second, hey, please. Bud. Yeah, Jeff. All right, Jeff, you're on with Sarah. Okay. Hey, Sarah. Yeah. How you doing? Good. How are you? Oh, not too bad. Um, so I'm I'm hailing from the liberal hellscape of Canada. So I've uh, you know seen a lot of this stuff firsthand as I've grown up. I'm 27 now. Uh, I just I had a quick question for you. Um, yeah. I, I'm gonna try and get to it. Okay. So uh, I grew up with a family friend who transitioned male to female when we were 16. She was always different. Like when I was six years old, I knew there was you know something different about her and my brother and I, and even her brother. Um, but then I also, you know, I had lots, lots of gay friends in college. I've worked with lesbians in construction. 
And something that, uh, so, uh, you know, I, I was back in 2011 aware of this whole thing in the cultural zeitgeist, probably before, you know, you, you could really say it became super, super common. And then I've, so the reason I bring up my gay friends is because I've heard concerns from some of them about whether or not this trend with young kids is transing away the gay, quote unquote. And I just wanted to get your take on that. Um, obviously, I, I believe in transgenderism as a legitimate thing, but I also, I'm, you know, I'm concerned that kids that otherwise would have been uh, effeminate boys or masculine women uh, are, are being told that they're transgender and basically um, ca- castrated, more or less. Yeah. No, you're absolutely right. I think uh, yeah, that is sterilized. a huge issue that we're seeing. Um, it's like reverse conversion therapy. Actually, it's it's conversion yeah. therapy for for gays. It absolutely is. I mean, when you see it, like places like Iran and stuff like that, where it's illegal to be gay, they will transition you so that it's not you know gay in their culture's eyes. Um, it it really does have that effect. And I, I did talk about this a little bit earlier when uh, we were, we were talking about it. it. There is the fact of you know it, it the they're so regressive in their stuff where it used to be like you could you could like pink and be a boy and you could uh, be a tomboy. Um, but now it's like they're saying mm-hmm. if you're a tomboy or anything like that, then you're probably trans. And then it's, you know, and that's, that's what, that's the real trans genocide is they're sterilizing these kids. They're actually, I mean, it is a trend. It's almost a genocide against uh, kids that would normally just grow up to be gay. So it absolutely. Is yeah. A huge issue. I mean, when I was growing up, like, yeah, exactly. Pink, pink wasn't a girl's color. I was told. And, you know, boys could like Britney Spears and, and then it seems like we've just regressed away from those things being okay. And I know lesbians in particular are, I've talked to multiple that um, are concerned, you know, they're like all these women that would have been potential partners of mine are men. And I don't want to have sex with a man, whether they have a vagina or not. Yeah, no, I mean, that makes sense. And that is uh, lesbians are definitely taking a huge brunt of everything because um, they're the ones that are basically being told if you uh if you don't date trans people you're you know you're transphobic and everything like that um and and a lot of it is it's it's interesting because i talked about it earlier where it's like the spikes are mostly young girls um but what you're seeing mostly in the media is males you know you know basically the misogynistic males you know being like telling women that they, they they have to you know, it's it's like the old straight man who used to say, you know, um, that lesbians just don't ha- haven't had the right dick yet, and and that's what yeah. they're getting now. But it's in, in the in the form of trans people. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's uh, it's messed up. Anyway, thank you very much for coming on the show. We really appreciate having you. Yeah, thank you. Okay, thanks, thanks bye, Jeff. guys. <clears throat> <clears throat> yeah, that's um, that's actually kind of a good point too, because just my you know, anecdotal from the Canadian comedy scene, but I, you know, there's way more men in the Canadian comedy scene than women, like by a lot. And then, but I only know of one, oh no, I know of two male to female trans, but then I know three female to, I don't even know if they consider themselves male though, but they all had mastectomies and they were all just lesbians when I met them. They were all just like, yeah, kind of garden variety. But I mean, how many how many funny female comics are there? I all mean. of them? What do you mean? <laughs> Every single one of them. They're all they're all hilarious queens. I mean, there's lots of yeah, there's lots of funny female comics, but you're just like that's just such a weird kind of contagiony thing. I don't know. And it's so obvious. I think you know what a lot of the stuff is with a lot of this stuff, and we've somehow managed to make it to this point without talking about sports. But so I'm going to bring it up now. <laughs> But it's like, it's so obvious to ev- anybody. Like you go, this is just so obvious and everybody's trying to tell you that it's not. And everybody's just like, it is. Like, you know, the, obviously the, the trans women in sports. You're like, obviously. Uh, come on. Yeah. Like why, uh, how, who ever thought that, you know, mediocre men uh, competing in women's sports would be a good idea? I mean... I actually was joking with somebody one time because, you know, U.S. rowing um, has basically made itself ID. And I know somebody that's a rower. And I actually asked him, I said, so when you get ready to retire, are you just going to self-ID as a girl and then compete till you die? And 
you know, win, win gold medals until you die. And it was just a good laugh, but it could be reality. Yeah. I mean, like, it only takes... The thing is, obviously, like, I don't think anybody transitions, like, for the the purpose of sports like i don't like that's no. right like nobody's doing that like i and i don't really you know i'd say a fringe group of people think that but most people are like yeah you're not doing it for that but then you're like but just the fact is you probably shouldn't still be allowed to do that and i think and then they go well there's no advantage and you're like i mean come on I don't <laughs> like know. come on now i mean just look i mean yeah, if you uh, look at like leah thomas standing next to the other girls or saying next to the females it's like come on now like this is michael phelps standing next to a bunch of girls yeah and i don't i i wonder too like if the the reason why this hasn't actually become a like a bigger issue is because they're all in these sports that just like nobody gives a shit about like really doesn't <laughs> care you know, like it's just like collegiate yeah. swimming and like some random weightlifting and and all these things. Although I I listen to Leah Thomas's, I don't know if you, Leah Thomas was on a podcast recently, um, and it's a trans man who did compete collegiately, I believe for some Ivy League school, but it was it, he was a swimmer, but obviously like biologically female, which I didn't know really. It existed. I tried to look up. It seems like they had one decent race, but um, I, I, it was hard for me to tell if they were there purely on merit or, mm -hmm. or what. But um, like so obviously, I, so I think it was Isaac Hennig had competed the the same year as Leah Thomas had competed for Yale and did really well in the female category, but I do believe you're correct. Started taking testosterone and jumped into the male category and didn't really do much. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, again, once I know, and I think, I believe in Australia there, I don't know if they're having the debate over it or if they actually do have a, a transgender uh, woman who's going to be playing basketball. Um, with, with, with biological, <laughs> oh, women. But like, that, that's yeah. the kind of thing where people go, okay, <laughs> but I can't person, get to the bottom of whether I, Andrew Bogut tweets a lot about. No, that person's like huge too. So it's like, come on now. <laughs> yeah, and again, if if they go, okay, this is the best player now in. Uh, this is you know the the top player in the league, and when it's like basketball, then maybe people are gonna start because I do notice a kind of tone shifting, specifically with the WNBA, where more people are like. You know, they're, I don't know if I just spent too much time on Twitter or whatever. And in, in real world, people are like, don't even know what the WNBA is. Wait, that's a thing. But um, <laughs> no, actually, that's, yeah, a, that's yeah, a that question. The, um, I, th yeah. I think that starts to come up, though, is because like a lot of people have questions about Brittany Grinder, which I don't know. I heard Brittany Grinder talk for the first well, time. Well, I always like, thought ever. that. Yeah. Well, could that be like the Caster Semenya thing? Because I always thought that I was actually be. super unfair. For people yeah. who don't know, Caster Semenya was like um, a, a, ra a runner, like sprinter or whatever, f competed in the female, kind of had like some male features, right? And mm -hmm. then I guess is maybe intersex is the explanation, yeah. but the, her testosterone was too low. But they never accused her of taking anything. They're just like, you were born this way. And then they're essentially saying, if you want to race, you have to take, like, I guess, estrogen or whatever would bring your testosterone down. You're like, that's not fair for sure. Yeah. I mean, uh, yeah. So it, um, she had an intersex condition and, yeah, ha was producing more testosterone than the average female. And it was like, yeah, you have to take testosterone suppressants to bring the levels down. And so it's it, it's it's a huge gray area that that was the first time we ever really had to deal with it. But I mean, that's like 0.001% of like the population as well. So it it, it is interesting. Yeah. That needs to be I mean, I guess more. I'd say with cat. Yeah. And with Castro Semyon, like she was legitimately winning gold medals. So when people say like with Leah Thomas, when you're like, not maybe not Leah Thomas, but like that, whatever the lifter was at the Olympics and you're like, they didn't even like place or not like, anything yeah. like they didn't even, you know, but this is someone who's like winning gold medals. 
but also it's like is you know born a woman i guess i i guess i don't know the specific distinction between intersex i i don't even think i heard the term until the last 10 years probably well it's a new term it is a new term like but, it uh, used to be yeah a lot of people used to and actually it's changed too. I think intersex is even an outdated term, but it used to be everybody used to just think that they were all hermaphrodites and that was the term that they would use for it. Um, but there's so many different what are called uh, DS. I think it's DSD conditions uh, designate or something sex can d- disorders. I don't know, uh, but there's, yeah. Cause I think it used to be, can be, yeah, I think it used to be him after that. What, what are your thoughts on the whole uh, the Jake Shields thing? I saw you were tweeting about that. Well, yeah, I mean, uh, <laughs> I think it's I think it's kind of funny. Um, I think it's hilarious that um, Mac Beggs actually accepted the challenge and and then deleted the Instagram post for it. But I don't know. I'm surprised that um, Jake hasn't gotten more like backlash for it because basically he's saying that he's wants to beat up a bunch of girls, but you know, <laughs> or he, he, he's wanted to, he's wanted to be he's wanting to fight a bunch of young or young females who have transitioned to men. I mean, it's kind of like Andy Kaufman. Obviously. Yeah, it's like yeah. Well, I guess that's the point he's trying to make because he's trying to be like, yeah, if you're if you are just a man now, then. Although I've I've seen him in person, he's I, I I'm gonna have him on the show actually at some point because I talk to him sometimes, and uh, but I'm like I've, I've I met him in person a few times and I would not want to fight that guy as a biological man. Granted, I'm not an athlete, but uh, he he would do some some serious damage. Um, all right, f- phone lines are open. Um, if anybody wants to call in, we have a little more time left. Again, thank you very much. One triple eight nine four nine two nine. Six nine. Um. So so, what are your plans uh going forward with, with uh? Is it, are you focusing on like I guess your a- advocacy? Is, is that yeah, kind of basically just your writing? Yeah, kind of continuing what I'm doing. Um, you know, I started doing um, I do a Monday night show on my YouTube channel. I just started that not too long ago. Um, and so just doing that. Um, I'm, I, I'm, like I said, I'm writing for the post millennial and human events. Um, but then just the advocacy stuff. Yeah. Continuing to travel. Um, I think we're going to get that picking up a lot more come this fall because that's when school starts to kick back in session. But, um, and then we'll start to, and you're going to go actually to like campuses and do this stuff. I mean, I'm, we're, I'm willing to go wherever people are willing to host me. So yeah. Um, you know, and, but this summer, yeah. Um, I'm planning on being at Freedom Fest, which is in uh, Memphis this summer in July. So, um, but it just kind of continuing on the bol- the role that we're doing right now. And actually, I have three bills that are up in the Louisiana uh, Louisiana Senate now. So, I could be going down there to testify and on behalf of these bills at any time. Oh, okay, Th- that's pretty cool. Do you worry about getting your? I, I was watching. Um you on your youtube channel with uh the trans guy and he had just yeah, got marcus what's his name uh so that was uh, marcus dibs marcus um, his, right marcus uh, dib his handle was the offensive tranny yeah yeah but he got his channel nuked mm-hmm. and he's not like yeah, he- really saying anything that i mean i guess it's controversial for a not trans person to say some of those things <laughs> Well, it's interesting because Marcus is one of the most um, toned down people on online. Like his name does not match. He doesn't really say stuff that's really that offensive. I mean, Blair White says stuff that's a whole lot more offensive than he says. Um, and it's a lot more intense when she says it. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know. Um, he actually got his account back, though. So they reversed that decision. So it's actually pretty good news. Oh, he did get it back. Oh, yeah. oh OK. Oh, that's pretty good news. Yeah, because I was going to say, like, a lot of that stuff, it must just be, like, I mean, even with this stuff, like, I do this show sometimes, and I'll have some people on, and, you know. Like, I, I did, uh, I was talking when, when Kanye was going full crazy, and I, I was reviewing uh, that Black Hebrew Israelite movie or whatever, and then they I got, like, a strike on my channel, and then they just kind of removed it, and... Yeah. Um, but but they they didn't even I, I didn't even get any indication of it. I just had a strike and then they denied my appeal instantly and then uh just one day it was gone. 
That's crazy. Yeah, I mean, I I, I worry about that, um, which is probably more why I'm focusing so much about on on Rumble. I'm talking to people at Rumble to kind of help yeah. boost a little bit and. Because it's, it's, I mean, if YouTube continues to go down this path, um, and I don't self-censor as much as I probably should on YouTube. Um, so if I, if I go, I go, um, I, I self-censor a lot more when I'm on other people's shows. You know? Right, right. Yeah, yeah. Just, <laughs> yeah, last thing you want to do is get someone's uh, thing taken away. I mean, hopefully Twitter is going to be the new spot. I, I, I it's, yeah. it's hard to tell, but it seems like it's m might be going towards that direction. Um, all right. Well, it doesn't seem like we have any callers remaining. I think I'm going to wrap this show up. Uh, anything else? Where can people find you? Uh, anything yeah, so, else you want to say? Um, on YouTube and Rumble, um, it's just youtube.com slash Sarah Higdon, rumble.com slash Sarah Higdon. And then um, Instagram and Twitter, it's um, Sarah Higdon with an underscore after it. And then if actually, if you want to find any of my work, you can go to my website, which is just sarahigdon.com, um, and you can support there. Cool. So, yeah, thanks for having me. Cool. Well, thank you. Uh, thank you very much for coming on. And, yeah, I, that, that – uh... I remember that the one comment you made that tweet about uh, it was all the white ladies or whatever. The I was like, that is the most spot on take. I go like that was absolutely perfect. Yeah. Um, all right. Thank you very much uh, for joining me tonight. Thank you very much, everybody, uh, for joining me uh, on tonight's show. We will start the after show at 11. Oh, you know what? We got one more caller to save okay. the show. And I think I know who this <laughs> is. So let's take one last call. Hello. Yo, it's Tony. Mr. T. Hey, what's... Tony, you yo, are yo. on with Sarah. Yo. Go ahead. Quick question. Do yeah. you find that the pendulum Tony, is starting on. to swing the other yeah. way? Yo, hello. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Do you I, find I, that I the do. pendulum is starting to swing the other way? Yeah, I, I absolutely uh, do. Because uh, I'm slowly so. starting to see that, too. I don't even know how to describe it or whatever, but I'm, like, slowly starting to see that in all kinds of things. That All this shit that Ryan and Danny make fun of, like, it's starting to fucking turn around the other way and, like, people are starting to kind of lose, gain the sense and be like, what? this is stupid. This is getting too much. And, like, from cancel yeah. culture to, like, you know. And so what, what, um, like, what have you seen? Like, what's kind of been better or easier or whatever? And that, that, that's like started to kind of swing the other way. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I think obviously with the bills that we're seeing passed across the country, I think we're up to, I, I think it's up to 18 states. Um, it's just mm -hmm. off the top of my head, but the bills that are coming, um, we're seeing just the rhetoric online is starting to. And when was the first uh, one? The other way. What's that? When was the first bill like state? What 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 was the first state to pass one of these bills, and when was that? Uh, was it Tennessee at the beginning of the year? Um, yeah, I think it was Tennessee. Tennessee. So it's all very recent. A lot it's all it. yeah yeah. It oh, it's all, all this recent. year. Yeah. yeah, it's it's really been oh, okay. this year. We're passing bills. We're oh, okay. seeing um, just the rhetoric heat, heating up. I think um, I I kind of explained it one time as I. I I sometimes I feel like the extremes are getting even more extreme, especially when you if you live perpetually online sometimes and you don't get out and touch grass enough. It almost feels like a rubber band because it seems like people that I knew that were more centrist and moderate, um, even on trans on trans issues, have even moved away from where they are not necessarily wanting to associate with people like me. And so it almost feels almost like a rubber band's about to snap and it's gonna come back hard. And it's going to be moving so fast. Yeah. Like, I got into this because I've, I've always said that I want the pendulum to come back, but I want to stop it at the bottom before it starts going back up the other direction. That's going to hurt me just as just as much as what we're seeing right now. And it's like, I don't even know if we can catch it. It's moving. So, it's starting to move so quickly right now, at least when you're seeing the rhetoric online. <laughs> yeah. Right, right, right. Um, okay. Uh, thank you very much again for, for joining us. Go follow Sarah everywhere. Go check out her Twitter, YouTube, her Rumble. That's, a, that's an important one. Next week, we got Roy Price on the show, a former head of Amazon Studios. That should be a fun one. Uh, thank you very much, Sarah, for joining me. I'll see some of you on the after show soon. Sign yeah. up on Patreon if you want to join the fun. Good night, everybody. Really a poet, you know it, all my Sarah Rowan. Empathic abilities, yeah, my face be also stolen. Bleep, 
blow up, nigga. That just means I'm working. They see me as a leader, so that's why I'm Captain Kirkin. These charts from the stars, that much is for certain. You can feel this here if you up or if you hurt. I'm raising my stock, not talking my feet, it's some Birkin. Number Johnny Five, got a fucking short circuit. Bring the track to life when I spit phenomenal. When I hit, she feel that shit in her abdominals. These rappers make me laugh like comic view, they comic through. You know I got a ball out, I hit the track running just like Sonic do. They don't want to turn on my light switch. Yeah. They was trying to get me on my hype shit. Yeah. They don't want to turn on my light switch. Yeah. And they tried to down me on some KO type shit. Yeah. They don't want to turn on my light switch. Yeah. Now we pulling up fresh on some flight shit. Ha. They don't want to turn on my light switch. Yeah. They don't want to turn on my light switch. Uh. They don't want to turn on my light switch. Yeah. They was trying to get me on my hype shit. Yeah. They don't want to turn on my light switch. Yeah. And they tried to down me on some KO type shit. Yeah. They don't want to turn on my light switch. Yeah.